We're starting with section 2.1, limit idea, instantaneous velocity, and tangent lines. Um, so what we cover in this section are uh, tangent lines, secant lines, uh, the velocity problem, the tangent problem. So what is a tangent line? The tangent line to a curve at the point P is the line that just touches the curve uh, locally at P. And so this is um, um, what we're so familiar with is this the circle. And here's a tangent line to circle. It depends, it depends on the point P you get completely different tangent line every time, basically. And so now, is it true that the tangent line only touches uh, the function on point P? No, it just locally touches the curve uh, of the function or the curve of whatever curve you're discussing um, uh, in one point. It may outside that locality it may touches the curve again so this is the point P and if you look at this oh it, the tangent line actually crossed the uh, graph of this function somewhere else basically um, and then over here over here uh, and again and again and well at right there um, you saw another touching the graph and and it could be even more than uh, two points it could be three points or so on and so forth and that's possible as well um, so that's the oh yeah right there there are three points that uh, the tangent line is is touching the graph at. now what is a secant line a uh, secant line to a curve F at and, uh, point A and B is the line that passes through A and B. So here's the line A and B. And then if you look, um, the, the uh, secant line passes through A and B. Uh, and so the slope, the slope of the secant line is m equal to the change in y over the change in x uh, and that's f of b minus f of a that's the change in y over b minus a uh, can you switch b and a yes if you switch f of a minus f of b over a minus b uh, that's okay also but you have to switch both the numerators and the numerator and the denominator Now let's observe this. Uh, here's the, uh, this is point A, that's point B, and, and then um, over here, this distance is the uh, absolute value of delta Y. And so the negative of distance at this point is going to give you the change in Y, and and this one is the change in x, basically, that distance. And so observe that if the two points are getting near and near, uh, something interesting happens. And so see there, little change, change, little change. And then, oh, if I just continue the trend of the secant line, uh, between the two points and bring one point closer to the other point um, the it gets closer and closer to something that, that to tangent line basically and so that's another interesting part that we discuss a lot because uh, most uh, part of this section uh, chapter three is is discussing uh, this phenomena and and, and how the change becomes instantaneous. So let's do an example. Um, a computer virus has uh, been released 
which spreads through a common voicemail application preloaded on many smartphones. The following table describes the virus of this virus, uh, the spread of this virus. Um, and so days in one row is days, day 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, and 60. The, the second row is percent infected 0 16 44 78 91 96 98 so the percentage is increasing basically find the average rate of change of infection over the interval 20 and 30 then 30 and 40 and 20 and 40 explain the growth with seeking lines on the graph what is the average rate of change when i'm saying average rate of change on the, over the interval 20 and 30 that means um, a function at 30 over fun, uh, minus a function at 20 divided by 30 minus 20 correct and so if you go back over here um it basically percent infected is a function of days right and so first thing to do is first thing to do is to calculate what's the value at um, at time 20 that's 44 what's the value at time 30 it's 78 so this is going to be Let's bring it down here. It's going to be 78 minus 44 divided by 30 divided minus 20. How about this one? What is the average rate of change when um, over the interval 30 and uh, 40? So that would be uh, 30 and 40 at 30 we have 78 at 40 we have 91 so it's 91 minus 78 divided by 40 minus 30 um, and you compute that one now what about um, this interval and 20 and 40 that would be this is 20 and that one is 40 so it would be 91 minus 44 divided by 40 minus 20 and so that's how we calculate the um, average rate of change now as we're discussing this so let's see the first one is um, when we discussed the average rate of change over 20 and 30 this is 20 and this is 30 20 30 and um, over here this part was uh, 78 and this part was 44 and so the slope of the uh, secant line between uh, these two points, the, the point 20 and 44 and 30 and 78. So these two points on the graph, the slope of the secant line is going to be the difference between y value over the difference over x value. And so the average rate of change is equal to the slope of the uh, secant line. And same thing for that one, same thing for this one. The line is, is uh, 3.4, the slope of the second secant line is going to be 1.3, and then the slope of the last second line is going to be uh, 2.35. And, and in these I click here question one. Find the slope of the secant line on the function uh, f of x equal to sine of x at, at the point pi half and f of pi half um, and 3 pi half and f of 3 pi half. So the two points on the graph of the function pi half and, and f of pi half and 3 pi half and f of 
uh, f of 3 pi half and we're supposed to find the slope of the secant line or average rate of change um, over the interval pi half and 3 pi half so in here let's see what is f of pi half f of pi half uh, is sine of pi half which is one what is f of 3 pi half? It's sine of 3 pi half, which is negative 1. So in calculating, <clears throat> if I take this as point A, take this as point B, I'm finding the, y, the difference in y values divided by difference in x values. And this is going to be at the bottom in here, we get a 2 pi half, and on top we get negative 2. So it's negative 2 over 2 pi half, which is pi. So B is the answer.